Okay, uh, my name is Ashley Wilson, and I'm going to be talking about building a Selenium community uh, one meetup at a time. Uh, so just a little bit about me. I uh, work at Sauce Labs as a customer development manager, so I do a lot of our customer-facing community uh, efforts. Uh, I'm also one of the organizers of this conference, and I'm the organizer of the San Francisco and New York City uh, Selenium Meetup Group, and uh, I'm an advisor to meetups worldwide. Um, Selenium Meetups, just a little backstory. I came to Sauce two years ago, and my first week uh, they said, hey, we do these meetups, you're going to do them now. And I said, Okay, uh, I knew nothing. I, I remember the first meetup, uh, a woman who was coming in the lobby of Sauce Labs uh, didn't work at Sauce. She said, what is Selenium? And I said, I don't know yet. This is my first day. I'm just organizing. So um, I say this because um, if I, as a new employee, didn't know what Selenium was, never worked at a tech company, can start a meetup group and kind of spread the meetups um, to other cities and organize this conference, you guys can do it too. So I really hope to kind of enable you with um, the confidence, because that's step number one, is just go for it. If you're thinking about doing it, throw it up on Meetup, go for it. Um, and then just to give you some kind of lessons learned um, from myself, and um, I kind of reached out to some other organizers um, in other cities to kind of just share what we've learned. So first off, uh, why Meetups? So in thinking about um, why I wanted to um, do this talk or talk about the, the power of the meetups, um, I came across this quote, which I think um, really says a lot. So, empowerment of individuals is a key part of what makes open source work, since in the end, innovations tend to come from small groups, not from large structured efforts. Um, if you're at this conference, if you're using Selenium, you know this to be true. We have taken over, it started with one person, it's grown, it's grown, it's grown, that's the same with meetups, and I feel like meetups, um, add to the innovation of Selenium, they add to the community. Um, so yes, that's why meetups are great. Um, additionally, there's a lot of Selenium users in the world. Uh, just to give you a little bit of data, um, just two years ago, you know, a little more than 5,000 people were putting Selenium on their profile. Today, it's almost 25,000. That's great. Uh, same with number of open source projects extending or leveraging Selenium. Three years ago, you know, a handful. Now we're up, you know, more than 1,000. Um, and just to, yeah, cities with meetups. Um, I think the San Francisco Selenium Meetup Group was the first one. Uh, started in late 2009. I came on board early 2010. And since then, meetups from San Francisco to London to Seattle. Um, so this has all kind of cropped up in the last couple of years. And of course, I'd like to see more. So, uh, so where to start? Uh, I think the first thing that you have to ask yourself um, is a couple of kind of key questions. How active do you want this meetup group to be? Kind of what are your goals for this? Is it just a small community to kind of talk and get really technical? Do you want to grow this to 50 people, uh, sorry, 50 people every meetup in six months? Um, your tactics have to be a little bit different depending on what your goals are. Um, same with how often do I want to have these meetups? I found once a month to work really well for me personally. Um, and generally, if you have a day job, that, that tends to, to be enough. Um, but if you're uh, a freelancer, if you're a contractor, you may have um, the bandwidth to do more than once a month. Um, and also, who, who in the community can you enlist to help? Um, you shouldn't have to do it alone. I think it takes one person to kind of spearhead the effort, but uh, most likely there are Selenium users, Selenium committers already in your city. So even if you put out a, a posting on the Selenium user group, just saying, hey, I'm thinking about starting this, you will no doubt find someone else who is also interested in, in doing this. So after you've kind of answered those key questions, uh, step number one is to throw your meetup on uh, meetup.com, which is a great tool. I'm sure most of you or all of you guys are using it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, really a great tool to kind of get the word out. So um, it's pretty amazing. Like the DC uh, meetup started maybe four or five months ago. And within a week, there were like 15 people had joined. And there was no mark. I mean, I don't know how they heard about it. I think with Meetup, if you click your interest, you'll get notified when there's other groups. Throw it on Meetup, watch it for a month, you'll be amazed. You will no doubt probably get at least 50 people in your group. So once you have a Meetup group, then you have to have a Meetup. So uh, the first after that is to decide what is the focus of your first Meetup. Uh, a couple things to consider. So you can either go the route of, I'm going to get this speaker, he's going to talk about this, or you can not do a speaker and just say, hey, let's just meet. I want to know who you are. Let's come together. Let's just start talking about how we're using Selenium. 
Personally, I think that having a speaker for your first event is more effective because it's more of a call to action. People know that they're going to get something out of it. So I, I would suggest kind of having a speaker talk for 30 minutes, um, keeping the topic really broad because you don't know, are you going to get more developers? Are you going to get more testers? Are you going to get more QA? You don't know the level of skill. So you don't want to turn someone off in the first meetup and they think that it's going to be too technical and, and you didn't mean that at all. So keep it really broad. If you're going to be talking about Selenium, do a problem solving session. Do a show off your framework. I mean, yeah. And then also um, I would suggest half speaker and then half open-ended time to meet your group, find out what their expectations are and find out what their interests are. Just talk to them. Who do you want to see? What do you want to talk about? What are you trying to accomplish here? Um, so the next step is to find a speaker or volunteer yourself. Um, I say volunteer yourself because if you're using Selenium, I mean, you're no different than the speakers you're going to get. I mean, you know what you're talking about. And as an organizer, it kind of sets a nice tone of, um, yeah, I'm someone that you should listen to and respect, and I really care about this. Um, if you don't want to do public speaking, totally fine. So if you want to go the route of finding a speaker, um, these are my suggestions. So first step is to look within your company. Uh, you're probably not the only person in your company using Selenium. If you're in a big organization, most likely someone enjoys public speaking, someone enjoys talking to people. So reach out, do uh, an email blast, or if you work for a small startup like Sauce, yell out in the room like, hey, who wants to speak? Um, I have enlisted many, many softwares, many times to speak. It works great. Um, same with Twitter. If you um, do a, like a standing search for Selenium, um, you can kind of do some filters to find out who are the, uh, the kind of thought leaders in your community. Who are the people talking about Selenium? Find out where they live. They live all over the country. They're in Tampa. They're in Minneapolis. They're in Seattle. So most likely, you'll find someone interesting who's talking about Selenium in your area. Um, a couple other options are Selenium User Group, the LinkedIn and the LinkedIn Selenium user group. Um, and also, if you, you know, like I said, get a bunch of members within the first couple of weeks in your meetup group, go ahead and send an email to them and just say, hey, does anyone want to volunteer to speak at the first session? Um, and if nothing else, if all of those fails, you're welcome to get in touch with me, uh, Ashley at Sauce Labs, a bunch. Uh, working at Sauce, we're really very, very connected to Selenium users, so I can definitely help you out. Uh, next step is to look for a uh, venue, free, uh, ideally with sponsorship for food and drinks. So um, tech companies, and really companies in general, we've gone to non-tech, startups, whatever, they like to host because this is a good recruiting opportunity. They get to show that, they get, a lot of them like to have you come to their cool office space and they give you beer and pizza and they're like, yeah, come work for us. So really if you position it like that, I, actually finding a venue is generally the, uh, the easier task. So, but if you're having, having trouble or you're new and you need to kind of pitch it, uh, I think recruiting is a really good angle. Um, other things to remember when you do go to a venue, uh, you need to kind of think about what kind of um, environment am I trying to create? Do I want theater style? Um, this works great if you have a speaker. This is not so great if you're trying to do kind of a getting to know you session. I would definitely recommend more cabaret style or even um, round table or me maybe even meeting at a bar. Um, the Portland group, uh, or the uh, Seattle group, they meet every once a month at the same bar location. Uh, you don't have to drink, so it's certainly not. It's just a, a family-friendly place, and they just meet in the back corner and have pizza and beer and just talk. So you've got to figure out kind of depending on your community. Obviously, in San Francisco, it's pretty easy to find tech companies, and um, we've grown the group too. So once you get to about 80 people, um, generally finding a venue is the way to go. Um, and just some other things. If you're going to have a speaker, always remember to get a projector and a screen. Uh, so you've done all that, you've done the legwork, you're ready to announce your meetup. Uh, go back to meetup.com, throw it up there, pick a date, and wait, basically. Um, and so here's some tips. So you've announced it, it's the day of, you're getting ready for your meetup. Um, here's kind of a sample agenda of kind of how I like to do the meetup. So we generally start around 6.30 or 7. 6.30 in San Francisco, 7 in New York. It kind of depends on when people get out of work, uh, where they're coming from. Um, always leave, you know, 20 minutes or so, whether you're talking, having a speaker or not, to just let people be. Let them grab pizza, let them dr grab drinks, let them meet each other. Um, about 20, 25 minutes in, announcements. This is a great time to get speakers for your next meetup. Allow people to talk about job postings, cool things that they're doing in the community, um, and then so on. You follow with the talk, Q&A, that sort of thing. Um, a couple other tips. So obviously, uh, arrive early. So you have plenty of time. There have been a couple of times where I think that the venue has 
got it all set up, all the tables are ready, only to come in an hour and realize that we've got to reset it all and make it work. So you want to give yourself time so that you're not freaking out. Um, also, plan for 50% attendee drop-off. I think this is um, every single meetup. 50% of the people have dropped off. Um, and early on, would order way too much pizza and way too much beer thinking like, yeah, 150 people are going to show up. No, it's always 75 or 100 if we're lucky. Um, so I really always, 50%, that's, that's pretty, um, pretty locked in. Um, and then just kind of some you know, housekeeping things. Sign-in sheet, you want to know who they are. You want to be able to follow up with them, name tags. Um, and then, yeah, just make sure to talk to your attendees about what they want to hear. I mean, this group is for you and them, so it really would help to know, hey, they don't want to know about recording playback tools at all. Or, yes, they do. They want to kind of go through the run through, let's start really kind of non-technical to technical. So kind of get a sense of, of your attendees that way. So you've done your first meetup. It was awesome. Now you're ready to go on and start doing them every month. So uh, one thing is to vary the types of meetups that you do. So um, San Francisco is a good example. So every couple months, we'll switch it up. We'll do lightning talks, or we'll do a whiteboard night, which is actually, um, we've done two of them now. I think that they've been everyone's favorite events, where we get 10 speakers from 10 different companies, and we just set them up with a whiteboard. And we tell them, draw your infrastructure, show us what you're doing. Um, and that's been really effective, and it is a great way to learn what Workday, what Okta, what Mozilla is doing kind of in the back end. You get a really kind of bird's eye view of something that you really wouldn't get otherwise. Um, another thing is to switch up the venue. This is kind of um, just personal preference, but uh, in San Francisco and New York, we try to find a different venue every month just to be able to see what other companies are doing, what their companies look like, um, and it kind of keeps things interesting. Uh, another suggestion is to record your meetups. Uh, I can't tell you how many people ask me, do you have a recording of that? Is it going to be recorded? It's really nice to say, yes, don't worry. And it's really great to have kind of a resource after the fact. Uh, whenever anyone says, what kind of talk should I do? Hey, go check out the video. You'll see what our meetup group does. Um, and just to have kind of, yeah, a, um, a record of kind of all of the work that you've been doing. Um, another thing is to join forces with other groups. Um, if there's a local PHP group that um, you could talk to them about PHP and Selenium, that automatically will double your numbers. Um, so that's great. You'll get more exposure, kind of the cross-pollination of everything. Um, and it just kind of, I think it kind of can help the momentum, especially if you're maybe only getting 20 people for the first three or four. Getting kind of a new, a new group, a new burst of energy will really help. Um, and another thing, if you're lucky, if you, uh, the San Jose meetup, for example, they do their meetups at Adobe. Uh, so they can stream all of their events, super nice. Um, if you're able to do that, that's really great. Um, a lot of people from all over the world want to see these meetups. They're in different time zones. And so this is a really nice chance to allow someone from India to tune in and see what you're doing in DC. Uh, so just to kind of finish up, I uh, talked to a couple other organizers, like I said, um, after I, I wrote a blog post uh, last October uh, talking about um, Selenium meetups. And uh, like I said, I mean, I kind of came into this, and I, the Selenium, San Francisco Selenium group grew from 600 to 1,500 um, in a pretty short amount of time. So I realized, like, oh, there might be something here. And I kind of branched out and did a couple New York meetups, and there was a lot of interest. So I wrote a meet, uh, blog post kind of that, that covered a lot of this. And after the blog post, like five meetup groups started. And people wrote comments like, oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you wrote this. So I didn't even realize um, the interest level. Um, and so two of them, um, the DC organizers and the San Jose organizers, um, I've been kind of interacting with them a lot and saw sponsors um, some of the food and the drinks. Um, and everything. So I asked them what has worked for them in the last three or four months. Um, from Dave Hefner, he's uh, a DC Selenium consultant now. He used to work at The Motley Fool. Um, he's or organizing the DC meetups with another uh, guy, Rich. And uh, these are a couple of things that he said. So the joint meetups work well. They did their first uh, meetup with the, uh, I think it was a jQuery group. Uh, but it was great. Their first meetup had like 65 people. They maybe only had 15 Selenium people there, but it really kind of set a nice tone. Um, the promise of pizza and beer makes people move mountains to attend. This is true. I, I, I know not everyone drinks, but I would suggest having Coke, water, and beer, because it's really nice, and it loosens people up, and people are generally like to stay. Um, same with the pizza. You're coming after work. You're going to be hungry. Feed them. 
Um, leverage your network. You never know the cool places you'll end up holding a meetup. Um, he was, in particular, talking about Living Social, which he didn't even know was in D.C., I think. So you may not even know the cool companies that are, that are around that want to get involved. Uh, good example, uh, Facebook decided to sponsor this conference uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, I thought that they were still using water. They're actually using WebDriver. They were in, they're in San Francisco. Last night I said, oh, you guys should talk at a meetup and host. And they said, okay. So already, you know, I just wouldn't have even thought, oh, Facebook, I don't know anyone there. How am I going to get them? Yeah, they're like, sure, tell us when. So leverage your network. Um, changing up the venue keeps things fresh. And then, like I said, following a loose curriculum. So this, I think, is, is really key. They started out entry level and proceeded on to mature approaches. Like I said, you want to kind of gauge the interest, the expertise of your attendees early on and kind of customize your group from there. And you really will learn a lot of different things. The San Francisco group, um, I kind of was always under the assumption that they didn't want anything too technical just because we had such a range of experiences. The technical meetups consistently get the most positive reviews on the meetup group page, um, the most attendance. So I really realized they want technical content. So maybe you can't do it every month, but definitely every two or three months, give them something really technical, really code-centric, and just let it go. Um, and then from Marianne, who heads up the San Jose Selenium Meetup group, um, yeah, like I said, meetup.com is a great organizing tool. It pretty much does a lot of the work for you. Um, she said, again, a good idea to WebEx. Um, and this was another uh, thing. She's been wanting to start the San Jose uh, Meetup group for a long time. And um, I think after reading my blog post, I think she got the courage to uh, go ask her boss, who immediately said yes. She works at Adobe. He said, yes, I want to, uh, we should be doing more of these um, engagement. We should do more community things. He not only said you can host these, he also said every month we're going to pay for the pizza and the beer. So you don't even know kind of what your company may support. You might have all of the makings of a meetup group right at your fingertips and not even realize it. So just to finish up, um, I mentioned uh, this blog post that I wrote, um, and I've been meaning to do a follow-up uh, to actually kind of best practices, but um, you can get the link there. Um, also, Sauce Labs, uh, we host, uh, sorry, we do blog posts and put the video up for all of our um, past meetups. So if you're interested in just seeing kind of the topics that we've covered, seeing video, we've done a range of range of things, so I would check that out. Um, again, meetup.com for when you're ready to start your meetup group. And then um, you're always welcome to email me, ashley at saucelabs.com, or tweet to me if you have any questions, if you need any help, if you need any advice, more than available to um, sync up and help you guys out. So, thanks. <laughs> Are there any questions? Yes. Let's see. Is it a comprehensive list or is it just a This is the list of meetups on meetup.com. Well, and the Colombo meetup, which is not on meetup, but I know about them. Um, do you know of any others? I know that there's like a, people who've wanted to start one. Like I know that, um, I think it was in New Delhi. I know a guy in India. I, I, I know in Austin, people have said, oh, I want to do that. But this is the list, as far as I know, um, according to Meetup, of the, uh, the meetups. But what's interesting about here is that San Jose, Washington, DC, I cut that off, Portland, Seattle, Phoenix, all started in the last five months. So I'm definitely seeing kind of it's growing. Mm -hmm. Is there a way of, of getting that beforehand from either Sauce directly or from the community? Like, what's the best way to get either regionally or maybe as broadly as possible uh, a good topic if you don't have one in mind? Right? That's a good question. Um, well, step number one is really you can ask your group. Um, Meetup.com makes it really easy to send an email to everyone. So I would actually probably start with that. Um, I've been amazed at whenever I've. It, it, emailed the group for things, needing a venue, needing an organizer to step up, usually get seven or eight responses. So I bet with that, you would definitely get um, some feedback. Um, other things, even through Meetup, is that you can do polls and you can do surveys. So you maybe don't give them, well, you probably have four or five topics that would be interesting to you, and you kind of know which is more technical or not. So I'd say start with, you know, kind of 
five topics, put a poll up and see which one is more popular. I think, um, but yeah, I, I would say reach out to the group, do a poll. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you can actually also look at, uh, I, I kind of go more off of either people volunteer or when we're figuring out topics, it's kind of, um, you know, like a lot of talk has been about WebDriver. So it was like, oh, we need to do a WebDriver talk. So you can kind of see what the trends are in the um, community. And generally, I think that attendees kind of are following along with those. So I bet that they'll appreciate kind of a, yeah, everyone's talking about WebDriver. I want to know about WebDriver. Robots. Or, or robots, yeah. <laughs> of course, we had to get Jason in there for the robot talk, so. Anything else? Cool. Well, thanks. <laughs>